Hi, today we're following up our second video on our project Barn Star. We had a little confusion last time we met for a video, but I've got it all worked out and we're going to talk about the amazing progress that I've made in just one week. It's really a turnaround, so grab something to drink real quick and meet us back here in just a second. And welcome back to the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Well, hi there, and thanks for coming back. We're working on this project from the bar, bar <laughs> from the bar. <laughs> hi, and thanks for coming right back. I just had to do a retake. Um, we're working on this project from the Barn Star Sampler, and we're working on this block right down here. Let's see if I can, yeah this block right here so um, this block is called diamond star and it's one of the larger blocks or the largest block size wise in this project it's called diamond star and it has a lot of little pieces and when I was going through last time how to cut the pieces and then we were beginning to start making the half square triangles and trying to figure out how they were coming together, the problem that I was having is when I was looking at the instructions, and so you see there's instructions here, I thought that number two built on top of number one. You were adding those pieces to this and vice and uh, continuing on down the steps in reality what was happening was that once you made the half square triangles then you were making the little subunits that go together to make the little corner block so i couldn't figure out how those half square triangles were turning all around in the second diagram versus the first diagram but I figured that out, that every step was individual. So the first thing we did, and I don't have one, but we made the half square triangles. And then we made a little subunit that was just two blocks. And then we made a subunit that was three blocks, another one that was three blocks, and then a final one that was four blocks. So that's where we are today. And I want to move these over so we can see these on our other camera. Just so we get a really good idea of how these go together. This is going to be the little corner unit in the large block called Diamond Star. And what we're going to do today is we're going to sew this together because I want you to see just how easy it is. Now the first step is to take these two pieces and sew them, <coughs> excuse me, sew them together. And I'm just going to quickly put a pin or two in here. It's pretty straightforward. It's one stitch right down the side and I've got my quarter inch foot on my machine and I've got my machine set to stitch at a quarter inch so that's going to give us almost a perfect quarter inch seam Okay, one down. So we've gone from two pieces to one piece. Now we're gonna add on this one. And I do like for the seams to press to the dark side. So I'm gonna put a little pin in to hold that down. And then we're going to put this one on top. And I do like to match up those seams so that all of them come together like they're supposed to. 
and it's matching up at the ends and it's this one needs to kind of stretch its muscles a little and then we're going to make sure this one is together our seams are proper and I think that'll do it. The one in the middle doesn't really match to anything, so we can let that give and take a little bit. Okay, now it's working. I wanna make sure all those seams fold in the right direction. That will help us in the finish because it'll be easier to press those seams down. And when I did the others, I pressed as I went. So I would do one seam and press and do another seam and press. And that did work really well. I'm just hoping we can kind of avoid that so you can see really quickly how it comes together. I was truly amazed when I started working on this at how fast it came together. Now we're going to take this side piece over here with the three and we're going to add it on. It's going to go right there. I'm going to pin the ends in place first. The nice thing about having this uh, machine and foot that does the quarter inch with the um, little guide on the side of it that's built into the foot is that all of your seams are pretty much uniform and because you're getting uniform seams you're more likely to keep the points on what you're sewing. the faster I sew the more likely it is that I'm going to get crooked or not hold that quarter inch or whatever I'm trying to do and this I think I've mentioned before that on this one I am trying very very hard to keep everything really really lined up nicely because of all the points in the corners we want it to come out exquisitely correct Okay, so then this is the last piece that's going to go on. And we're going to start, as usual, pinning the ends. And because this foot has a edge guide, it's always easier if you trim off that little dog ear. Okay. And then where do we have things that need to match up? Right there on that seam. And here on this one. And I will say this, because this particular pattern has a lot of pieces, some of these seams are going to get really thick. So you may just need to take your time and sew over them. One dog ear there at the end that I didn't trim but fortunately since it didn't have a side seam it sewed over it pretty well it didn't cause any problems okay so let's see what we've got 
just that quick and that seam will go that way here is the block that we have a very attractive block lots of little pieces but because of the way we sewed it into sections and then put it together it came through very easily now there are four of these in this large diamond star block there are also four of another square and that is this one here now i've started this and i've got it a little bit further but what this is is it is a block and it has as the pieces in the block a flying geese piece here except that the pieces on the edge are longer so they're calling it an elongated flying geese i found these easier to put together than the regular flying geese with the smaller ends um, the one thing that challenges me on these is trying to get that seam to come out right at the point and no matter how hard i try there's always at least one and no matter how many i'm sewing that doesn't so i had a couple of these that i had to take it out and um, either adjust the fabric or adjust the seam so that's this piece now this one is also a flying geese the difference with this is you're using a small piece on one end and a longer piece like these on the other end this is a little actually it's the same is it the same piece i think i think it's the same piece maybe a longer piece i'm not sure um, and then we're going to make one of these for every block and then we're going to make one of this for every block these two are the same these two are the same except they're different when you sew on the little piece on this one it's on the left side of this printed fabric when you sew this one the smaller piece is on the right side of the printed fabric and then these sew together now this is a little tricky because you've got the points of those flying geese in the middle that you're going to try to line up and i found for the most part the ones i've already done they did line up um, some of them were the points didn't touch which i wish they would have touched and if i were really persnickety i probably would have gone back and, and adjusted those but really they were only less than an eighth of an inch off and i didn't really think it was worth it because once it's quilted you're probably not going to see it so now i've pinned this together pinned the ends and then i pin these centers and i can kind of look through one to the other and see that the points are lined up but it's so much fabric there that i'm hesitant to put a pin in it because it's going to be so hard to sew through anyway just with all the fabric okay let's do a quick seam here now where it gets to the point where it's joining those two points in the center you've got one two three four five at least six layers of fabric and probably probably by the time you have both pieces together you've got almost a dozen they're small pieces and it's a tiny little area but there is a lot so i like to just keep my left hand behind here and just keep it guided to go straight through the machine stitching there because it is going to want to struggle a bit but only for that like little half inch where it's going through all those layers and the thickness of that is going to want to push your uh, the foot on your machine is going to want to push that out of sync so you just want to watch that now this one hmm, this one could have been a little bit better let's look at it the points aren't quite together and we cut this point off a little bit 
That's interesting. Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is maybe take out those stitches right there and try to line it up just a little bit. It's going to be a pain because where those stitches are going over that thickness, they are tiny, tiny, tiny. My machine is on 1.8 and that also is why it's a bit tiny. But we want it to hold together. I'm only going to take out about an inch just right where that is. And there are lots of little tiny things. So I think we'll cut here and you can join me in just a minute. All right, I got this piece to apart about an inch, not much further than that. And then I took my trick of putting the pin through the point of the on the right side or the underside and the top side so that I can line them up and then I pinned it on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hold that pin in place while I start sewing and then take it out just before I get to that. And I'm going to back the machine up so that we probably got a half an inch of stitches from the first set of stitches and the second set. And that will kind of lock it in place for us. Okay, and I've still got, I've still got one pin shooting straight up at me, so I just need to be aware of that and keep that together. I think, I think that's what we're going to do right there. We're going to hold it right there. And it is a tricky little thing because it is not wanting to sew. We're going to pull that pin back a little bit. Okay, now I think we got it. Okay, let's see how we've done that time. See if it made it better or worse. Okay, I do think that's better. Pins out the way. There we go. And it's just, it's a little tad off, but the points are kind of coming right to each other. And like I said, once you start assembling the whole thing and you're looking at a big project versus a small little piece, your attention is diverted. And we're also going to be sandwiching this with batting and quilting it so that will make a difference as well. Okay we're going to go on to the next step of this project. Now we have not pressed it and on the other pieces I did press the center seam open. So I'm going to pin those open because I'd like for it to be as consistent as possible. And then these seams on the other ones pressed into the green. So we're going to pin those. Okay, so here we are. We've got that. We've got these pins down here with the uh, seams pressed underneath. Now onto this block. <coughs> We're going to put two of these squares, and these squares are one, two, three, four and a half inch squares. And we're going to pin them right to the edge of the fabric. And we have to do one at a time because I've drawn a line here, diagonal to diagonal, and we're going to sew right along that line. And then we're going to flip it back and this is what we're going to get. So I'm also going to put a pin here because this is, this is the thing I dislike. It's that co sewing corner to corner and trying to line it up because even the line here is not at the point exactly. So we're going to have to adjust that. 
And when I sew these, I also have to flip out the feet so that I'm using something that does not have the guide on the side. Okay. So we're going to start that right. Got to change my machine too. Right in the center, which is also very hard to do because it's the very point of that fabric. I'm going to grab a little scrap here because that does help. Okay. Now right at the point and we're going to start sewing. There we go. Then we're going to follow that line. In the middle we have a bulk of fabric because we've got seams underneath. I think you could hear my machine kind of chug chug that. Let's see what we've got. Now I think that's supposed to line up so that the blue is past the little point. But I think we're going to let it go. And the first thing we're going to do <clears throat> because like a flying geese, if you sew the next piece without trimming, you're not going to be able to trim underneath that. So we're going to go ahead and trim. That's part of the problem. There was a pin underneath it. And you won't believe this. This is one of those magic pins that I've been uh, testing out this week. We may have to go back and put it, another stitch in. It sewed right through the very top of the head of that pin. That's why it was struggling. Okay, <laughs> you never know what might happen here in the sewing room. We're going to go back and put a little extra stitch there because I did have to cut that. But that explains why it, why it was struggling. And I may want to watch my stitching on my machine because I probably am going to need a new needle. We'll give it a little bit of a C to see how it works. Okay, we're going to put the next one on. We're going to do the same thing from the other corner. We're going to line up the edges of the fabric. I'm just going to keep using that pen. The pen itself looks like it's in good shape. The head doesn't look too great. And let's check before we sew this side. We've got a pin there too. So we're going to adjust how that pin sets. So we are not sewing over it. Okay, and where's our little scrap? Now that time when we ran through the center of it, you could hear a little change in the pitch of the stitch, but you didn't have that clunkiness of the machine throwing, sewing through the pen. That was, I don't think I've ever had that happen. But it's good to know that you can, if you need to, sew through your pens. Okay. And there we go. So... Trim that off. Here's what that block looks like. 
it almost reminds me of a little bow tie because these these two pieces tend to lose their um, their pattern if you're not looking at it pretty closely so now we've done these two blocks in this whole big uh, diamond star excuse me block there are only three individual type pieces or three sub blocks so I was able to use the power of repetitive stitching to really really buzz through this yesterday once I got the hang of how all these were fitting together and I knew conclusively that it was going to work because that was the problem I was a little concerned that I would get them all done and there was an error in the book and it wouldn't go together for me and I'd spend a day ripping things out there's no error in the book it is great it was an error in how I was interpreting what I was seeing so let me show you how quickly this went together and I'm going to give you a little preview let's see how I can do this there we go a little bit more yeah there we go now you can see up on the wall I've got several pieces of this quilt already done it's just waiting these two blocks that need to be trimmed up and pressed this third this is the third block in this and it's very simple you start out with a square and then you add these four uh, half uh, well they're triangles they're they're made from a square but they're triangles and you just sew the opposite sides on and press and then you sew the other two sides on and then you trim that up and the book gives you the uh, exact dimensions of how it what size it should be and then you do the same thing for these two fabrics it went together really quickly and there's only one of those so that is like we're done <laughs> then we hook together this little I'm gonna call it a bow tie block because it looks like it has a little bow tie in the middle here and here to make a strip and then on this side we sew together I don't know what we want to call that it kind of looks like an arrowhead for some reason to me that's that's just my nickname for it we sew two arrowhead squares together with one of these bow ties in the middle and we're going to do the same thing here so we're going to have three strips and then we're going to sew those three strips together I don't think I've had a project that was this complicated that came together in essentially two videos for us and we did handle some uh, challenges with cutting the fabric wrong and then trying to interpret the instructions but it's it's pretty easy uh, all things considered now when I go to sew these strips together I am going to need to pay special attention to making sure that the seams match up appropriately and also um, that we are at the right size this one looks like it's stretched out a little bit on this side and it's a little short on the other side it could be the way it's hanging I'm not sure but that's going to be the whole block so when you join me next time I'm gonna have this all together and you can see it's gonna be big it's 24 inches this boards about 30 30 two 33 from the inside corners uh, of the bolt of the paperboard and um, it's a big block so what my plan is is to use some of these smaller blocks or the let's say the medium sized blocks I think that they have like eight inch blocks I don't think I'm gonna I don't know let me let me say that I need to look and see but I'm gonna use some of the smaller blocks to build a border around this block now I'll have to look at the sizes to be able to determine if I need to put a border before I do the the individual block borders or not and that will depend on sizes but um, I, this is going to be quite striking and I, I don't know at this point how big I want to make it 
it's very pretty and I'm thinking that I may want to make it bigger than I initially thought I wanted to but I need to think on that a little bit um, like I said it came together really quickly and it would be very easy to take and construct a quilt just here we're kind of spitballing ideas but there are <clears throat> three large blocks in this barn star sampler that I believe are all uh, 24 inch blocks it would be pretty easy to take two of the patterns and put together a, f a set of four of these now think about that four blocks is going to be 48 by 48 and you've only done four blocks and then by the time you put probably a little border and some other blocks on the outside of it you've got a pretty good size quilt there even without any borders so I need to uh, really take some time and think about what I want to do with this quilt what is the purpose of this and how big I want it do, do I want it a full bed side bed size do I want a lap quilt what am I looking for and that will determine where we go from here with this project but for now let's just say we're going to finish this up so that we have this one block finished and then we'll decide where we go from there I hope you've enjoyed this um I have enjoyed it once I got past the challenges uh, it was lots of fun and it like I said it came together so quickly it was amazing um, probably about three three four hours yesterday I spent sewing on this and a, uh, another project um, and it was uh, frustration free so that's where we are and I hope you've enjoyed this video be sure to give us a thumbs up and like the video if if you have indeed liked it and subscribe to the channel if you've not done that already we'd like to see new members join us and share your comments on this project or any other and we'll see you next time here at the shamrock quilt studio have a great week